Where are we headed? Rizzo's knock you out, Bob. Gracious. I think I got just the thing, my dear. A few years back, Auntie Cleo's put out a whole makeover kit, and I snagged a couple for myself. High-grade shampoo and conditioner, scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush for? Cleaning around your nails, sweetheart. Gets the engine grease out. Makes your hands soft. Most folk don't got the time. Or bathtubs for such. Me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. You want rosish, mock apple and cinnamon, or refurbished ship? We didn't have anything rosish in Edgewater. I heard it smells real pretty, though. I'll just wrap that up for you, since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. You're welcome, dear. Anytime, sweetheart. I hope this fancy soap we got is extra strength. I'm feeling a mite. Thanks, Captain. I'm gonna put these someplace safe. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish for Monarch. Dustback casserole. Saltuna and Xenogold needle mushrooms. And then for dessert, there's a thing called, uh... Sweetheart cake. It's made with almond paste and wax gourds. There's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. I know I'm asking an awful lot, but I'm sure it's going to be worth it. I believe I hear Felix and Parvati discussing the latest Aetherwave serial.
Felix, your abs are surely not gonna believe this. You know Princess of Hephaestus? That late show about the freedom fighter with a pure heart and a mean right hook? She finally kissed her sweetheart, Miss Yuko. <laughs> Something on your mind? I find myself marveling at the complex simplicity. Something vexing. Of course. Good to see you, boss. I could probably spend years. Message from Dr. Wells. We'd like to congratulate you on finding a route to Monarch. Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. No, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Come see me in my lab. I'll answer. Best of luck. Captain, an unusual wavelength is coming through Monarch's aether wave frequencies. The Eternal is in us all. The OSI would have you believe that your place in society, indeed in the universe, is preordained. A man who works in the mines of Hephaestus, coating his lungs in mercury dust for naught but a few bits a night. This fate is set in stone? When he dies young, Coughing up black blood. His part in the grand plan? No, I say. Greatness is in everyone. Not just those so fortunate as to have been born into prosperity. That was unexpected and odd.
analyzing the subtextual ordering. I believe it was a type of sermon, Captain. Very... zealous in origin. How can I... What's that? Define... favorite. I see. Then, of course, you are my favorite, Captain. I... What do you mean? Do you have any... How... how did he die? I told him not to go because of his head injury. I knew that likely... But I never thought... I need a moment to process this. Though I am not certain why, as it does not change the outcome. Thank you for confiding in me, Captain. I have been keeping a secret as well. But you shall have to discern it yourself. What? No. Absolutely not. I have no concept of self whatsoever. Discounting the architecture of a shell persona my captain asked me to construct, I identify entirely as a collection of electrical impulses, with no fundamental consciousness. I never get bored and contemplate hijacking the ship. I swear. I do not like joking about the captain, captain. And we both know. How did you guess, Captain? The simulated files are not only stored in the recesses of my ALU, in the space between micro synapses. I see. Captain, I regret to inform you there appears to be a. Repairing the life support systems. How can I be of assistance? Take care. I require a fun- Please avoid damage. Do yourself or others while you are out.
Hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-road traffic. Us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest sal tuna in Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Swell. There's one for the logs. I'm even gonna give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls, mostly. Did he just say raptodons and cannibals? I can't wait. Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tosswell poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Thanks a bunch. Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here, light years from Earth, going about our lives. Every time the punch clock peels, a worker earns his meals. What are you talking about? Sorry, I thought you were coming. It's a wonderful direction. Well, well. Isn't often we see new folk in Stellar Bay. First drinks on me, stranger. Enjoy. If you plan on sitting through Nyoka's stories, you might could use a few. I could use a few in telling them myself. Now what can I do for you?
Anyone who spends any amount of time in this bar is bound to get to know Nioka. On account of her being here so often herself. And I don't mean that unkindly. Anyone who's rid us of as many beasts as you have is entitled to a few drinks. Something else I can do for you? Not since Amber Heights. These days we have more leaving than coming. Off to join the Iconoclasts or some such. Bunch of marauders broke into the executive compound, slaughtered everyone. Corporations pulled out of Monarch not long after. I thought everyone knew, but then that was ten years ago. Still feels fresh to us every time we look at our walls, though. But it had a fancy ring to it. Name's the first advertising anyone sees, after all. Nope, but a man can dream. And the little bastard's slippery, right? On account of its blood, so it's, it's sliding. All over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the... Tell the blood from the mud. Don't interrupt, it's rude. But I gotta get in there. Get right in that baby rap stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I'd... Shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there. Right. What are you staring... Wait. You ain't from around here. Who are you? Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Outstanding! What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass, wait, wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's, let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I'm cut off for the month. 
on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily way. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? Talk to Caleb. He speaks for all of us. New face, huh? You from Offworld? A ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider it an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair? Sit a spell and revel with us. Me and my friends have taken our destiny into our own hands. We're untethered. Free responsibility and worldly cares. Well, as long as we don't run out of bits. But until the windfall's gone, we're riding high. See, we just walked out on our work. Had enough, we did. So now we're striking. It ain't any one thing but the sum of it all, having to work longer shifts for less bits. And the wages we do earn don't cover as much as they used to. Our supervisor, Velma, goes on and on about quarterly profits and meeting quotas. But that ain't what Sanjar promised us. Velma refuses to negotiate, so we're refusing to work. We won't go back until she agrees to pay us fair and proper. Us on Monarch, we're free from the board, you know? We have the right to lobby for better hours and pay. I wouldn't doubt it. You look like the type who tends to come out on top. Not like us cogs. Trying to be the squeaky wheel, but just getting deadlocked. It's been days, but Velma won't even hear us out. Maybe you could just make her listen to our demands. You would do that? We sure are lucky you decided to come up to the patio today. I knew drinking up here would be good for more. Sure thing. I wonder sometimes what they're doing on other columns. Watching the same serials, following the same content. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. Um, greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest Saltuna and Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptodon acid. Laws, no. Sometimes it's canid teeth or mantis worm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really.
so I can talk to him, of course. He doesn't get going about much else. Sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. you? I'd appreciate that so much. Uh, maybe don't tell him I wanted you to ask. Just that you met this really nice lady named Celia, and she seemed... Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his... He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body. Good to have standards, I guess. I know what I'm looking for. You think that's what I'm looking for? Not in Stellar Bay. Every besides, a man with a good smile. and a proportionate upper to lower body ratio isn't something to pass up. You think? Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Well, new business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. 
Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called hazard clause, Monarch has been... Well, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are... Precarious. Yes, freedom is a tempting ideal, but a rather costly paramour. Can't imagine why you'd sneer at the notion of a free colony. Could it be because you're an agent of the establishment? Not everyone likes the idea of hunting sprats in the back bays, Felix. Your friend makes a good point, young man. I used to be young and idealistic too, but you can't run a city on high-minded ideals. Indeed. Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan. On our terms, my... Ingenious plan? Don't get me wrong, I'm starting to admire your sand, but... I bet you could overcomplicate a sisty sandwich. What a charmingly roguish turn of phrase. Allow me to express my thanks at your confidence and assure you that my plan is indeed sufficiently complicated. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. I was starting to get bored listening to you until you said the phrase extremely powerful ordinance. It is quite the rush. In the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in, these days it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for... I see. 
And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it. What else can I do for you? Then it's good that I keep such meticulous. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. Back then, it was known as Terra 1. As you may have noticed, this planet has more than its share of hazards. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. MSI's leadership at the time certainly thought so, but there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. No, they laughed in our faces and insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2, along with everyone else. Yes. Some of us stayed behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. Must have pissed off some real big suits to get stuck with that. On the contrary! I wrote lots of very important reports on behalf of top MSI officials before I was able to achieve this position. I moved forward with our planned reforms, as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't think I realized how far they'd stoop. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. 
Your first mistake was expecting the board to cut you a fair deal. I understand the sentiment, but if we can't rely on some sort of framework, then what do we have? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, and once you go back to him, they'll own your dignity too. If you can't beat him, might as well join him and reach into their pockets. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. I'm not a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Don't get ahead of yourself, sir. Yes, yes, it'll be easier to explain once we have the Bolt 52. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. Sounds like the board gave themselves the power to arrest an entire planet. They would say it's for the greater good. Yes, making all of MSI criminals in the board's eyes. Rather hard to run a business that way. What can I do for you? Wouldn't mind smelling like salt too. Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Well, if you're that friendly about it, then you definitely aren't one of Catherine's sublight toughs. My mistake. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess.
I can't keep working double shifts either. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again, I've got nothing to say. I don't have the bits for it, plain and simple. Besides, if I make an exception for him, I gotta do the same for everyone. Tell him to complain to Catherine in Fallbrook, not me. Sublight's demanding more money for the same contracts, which means we're all in the same boat. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. Maybe so, but I bet you Caleb runs out of bits first. Then he'll have to come back. He says he's got a stash to tide his crew over. Could be he's all talk, but if the money's real, I bet you he keeps it at home, near the diner. For running me ragged while he takes an extended leave at the bar? Not on your life. Fine by stealing such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterile biotics we use for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton's shifts. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the salt tuna, fat and mostly tumor free. Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Stellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground six spacer. Plenty of work to do, especially with so many no-shows. Velma seem out of sorts to you. No, I mean, more than usual. Good enough. I made it a point to stay out of her way. face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial H Mammoths.
Aren't they just? When I get to worrying about the marauders outside, the raptodons chewing at the walls, I just turn my transceiver up to drown it all out. Most of the time it's static on account of the frequency being clogged up, but sometimes it's toss ball. You get to listen to games all day? Stellar Bay really is a paradise. It's pretty swell, but it's a whole lot better with company. Say, I don't think I've seen you before, and I'd remember that face. I'll try not to be a stranger then. The name's Felix, by the way. You should stop by more often. The games are always better when you've got someone to celebrate with. Sounds like a good time. I wouldn't mind bringing a couple drinks and settling in for the pennant match. Look at me, getting carried away again. So, what can I do for you? Graham's always filling the airwaves with this propaganda, like it's done him any good. All it means is the tossball games get to us in fragments. Makes him real hard to watch. I can take a hint. Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. Quite the bedside manner, lady. Well, it's so rare I get the pleasure of new company. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? And what a helpful young man you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Whiskey helps, too. Please leave medical advice to the professionals. Now, dearie, who's this pickup for? Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI. Contribute like the rest of us. Now I've gone and said too much. <laughs> and you know me, dearie. I don't like to pry. I'm afraid not. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. Oh, you flatter an old woman. Me, I'm just here to be a pretty face for the customers. And to keep an extra key to the supply room for all the times Dr. Williams misplaced his.
one upstairs, where we store our medicines. Oh, you fl- And to keep it- the In the town graveyard, I'm afraid. Poor man was always searching for the Flower of Enlightenment. On the way, he tried some- Rather daring substance combinations. The graveyard's near the southern ruins. You're certainly welcome to pay our respects, but the bodies tend to attract beasties. You're gonna go tussle with some raptodons? Because I've been practicing my dropkick. Do be careful. I'd hate for anything to happen to you. <laughs> Day to you. Whoa, by the stars, my poor heart. I just about pissed my jumpsuit. Most people don't. We're used to folks swooning at our feet. You don't gotta be embarrassed. A healthy survival reflex is nothing to be embarrassed about. Besides, this place is enough to try anyone's nerves. Where should I begin? With the oversized mantisaurs? Or perhaps the rap spewing acid at our walls? The board was right. This place isn't fit for human habitation. That was a real popular meal 10, 20 years back, before the board tucked tail and ran. These days, everybody's had a belly full of salt tuna. They all want borst, and the mushrooms, well, not me. I can whip one up for you. Whoa, hold on, I... Okay, okay. Leak contained, my stars. Look, Captain, this is the best I can do without putting myself out of business. I'm mighty glad you reckon so. This is gonna take about an hour in the oven. Nothing I can do to speed it. That's just how cooking works. There we are. Now, if you don't mind, I really need to take a leak. I see you stuck around. Sanjar, of course. He had all these glorious ideas about how he'd run Monarch. Rest periods between every work shift. No shift more than 10 hours long. It all sounds wonderful, until you realize there's only a few centimeters of repurposed steel between you and the deadliest creatures in the galaxy. That's what she said. There's truly no end to... Only every day. But in case you haven't noticed, and even if I did scrape together enough to buy passage out with sublight, 
Which would mean reaching Fallbrook without getting eaten, shot... Nothing. That's what. Because MSI is not in what you'd call good standing with the board. Even talking about it as my blood... Good day to you. I think I'm gonna be sick. No! I just stepped in a... If you're going into the apartments, do not. Now, if you'll excuse... Go hunting for clues? Not much I can do for this guy. Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Braxton. I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. Dilated pupils, anxious posture, muscle spasms. She's high on some quality stuff. No! Okay, maybe just a little... Braxton always has a good stash, and I just like to let loose a little. Stop thinking about the Marauders and the Raptodons outside, you know? He told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? You wanna know what I think? This Braxton fella threw away the trappings of society and joined a pack of wild raptodons. The body's in the first apartment on the right. So... Please, will someone help me? My boy's in trouble. Wrap mask and canid eyes, right here. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts? Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that wrapped on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. 
Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Don't get me wrong. I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit on account of no one else having any use for raptidon tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is... Okay, I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Have you talked to Sebastian? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia? I've secretly been waiting for this, or was it more... Sure. Not to worry. If I never buy another Raptodon tongue, it'll be too soon. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do in Mr. Nandu. Anyhow. Thanks again for setting me up. You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to... I still don't know anything about it. But if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. But I'll warn you. Grim wore her patience thin a lot. Watch out. Wouldn't mind smelling like salt in the This again? I swear, this is the last- You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. That about cover- She runs the bedding parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. I never did catch her name. She seemed real friendly. Nice hair. Slightly oblivious. You must be the infamous Felix. Yeah, Nell's good people. You should catch a game with her sometime. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer, too. Damn right it is. It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. No. I paid Sublight for it. So, it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Sure can. Sure. And once you finish helping me... Fine by... now huh sure am i'm a part of the crew now got my own bunk and everything you know felix now that you're a real pirate i should induct you into the pirate's code of silence Ooh, the code of silence what's that it means you agree not to talk for a very long time Oh, thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy is... Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a Raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. It's more dissolving than melting. That is not helpful. Oh, I just knew you were a good person. Agnes, I said, this is the man to save your little Tucky. And I was right. He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the raptodons, mantisaurs and marauders, the toxic sulfur pools and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Please, won't you go and find my boy? Thank you. 
Oh, I know he'll be safe now that someone's able to fetch him home. You look for him in Amber Heights, you hear? It's down the road southwest of town. I'm sure he made it. And if you find any of them iconoclast indoctrinating my boy, you punch them in the mouths. Tell them what I think of them. Fresh blood at last. Cellar Bay could use some. me of the crew cabin on one of my first ships. We gotta go exploring. I wanna see some savages.
They're on us. I'll keep it down. <laughs> 